Is cash today a better investment than bonds, particularly for those of us in or near retirement? That's the question we're going to tackle in today's video. Hey, everybody. My name is Rob Berger. This is the Financial Freedom Show, where we talk about investing, retirement, and financial freedom. If those topics are important to you, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I also send out a free newsletter every Sunday morning. You can sign up for that with the link below this video. So today's question actually comes from a viewer. His name is Mike, and he emailed me, and he, here's what he said. He said, question. Since bond funds, and he specifically mentioned BND, which is a ticker for a Vanguard total US uh, bond fund that we'll look at in a minute. Since bond funds have done nothing the last 10 years, what would be your thoughts on someone who's retired setting three years worth of living expenses aside in cash and investing the remainder in equity index funds? What's well, a great question. Actually, it's sort of several questions. It's cash versus bonds. And it's also a question of stock, a stock, I'll call it fixed income to, to capture sort of cash and bonds, stock versus fixed income allocations in retirement. But I think it's a, a really good question, particularly with today's interest rates. So let's dive right in. I want to start by showing you uh, the BND fund that he mentioned. This is, the, again, the Vanguard Total Bond Market Fund. It's an index fund. V Fidelity has basically the identical type of fund. It's very inexpensive, just three basis points. You can see that there. And its current yield is uh, 4%. Now, I want to put that into some context. First of all, what does that mean, the SEC yield? What they do is they take the interest that this fund generated last month and then um, annualize it. So in other words, sort of pretend that that's the interest you're going to get for the rest of the year. Of course, we don't know that. but uh, And it comes out to a yield, uh, we'll just call it uh, 4%. Now, that's that's today. But Mike's absolutely right. If we look at this fund longer term, it hasn't done a whole lot over the last decade or so. And let's check that out. We go to performance and we can scroll down here and we'll look at uh, the 10 year performance. You can see right here is 1.24%. Not a whole lot to get excited about. 15 year performance, a little better, but still 2.6%. And that's those are particularly low numbers when we think about how the stock market has done. Of course, it's had its ups and downs, but over the last 10 to 15 years has done uh, very well. And so you can sort of understand Mike's question. Uh, maybe cash is a better way to go. And let's put that into some perspective. I'm showing you now, this is uh, my site, allcards.com. I'll leave a link to this page below the video. This is just uh, the best savings accounts that we can find. We track over a thousand uh, bank accounts, over almost a thousand CDs alone, but also savings accounts, money market accounts. This is our savings account page. And you can see the top rates. These are all FDIC insured exceed 5%. And there's plenty in the high fours, as you can see. And and so it kind of gets back to, to, to Mike's question. Even by today's standards, these rates look better than what BND's current yield is. If we go back to the quote page, uh, 4%, well, boy, we can do better than that in an FDIC-insured savings account. So should we get rid of bonds? Now, for me, the answer is no. And let's sort of walk through why. And I think the starting place is to say, well, yeah, bonds have not done all that great over the last 10 to 15 years, but how's cash performed? Well, let's take a look. So I'm using Portfolio Visualizer. And what I did, I actually just set the date to 2010 uh, to the present, assumed a $10,000 lump sum investment. And I looked at three portfolios. You can see them here. One's a total U.S. bond market portfolio, kind of like BND that we just looked at. One is cash, probably going to be represented by sh you know, shorter term treasury bills. And then I also decided to throw in tips. And how did these three investments perform over the last 13 or so years? Well, as you can see, actually tips won out. Their compound annual growth rate was 2.85%. Uh, again, not, not, a, not a whole lot to get excited about, but still 2.85%. Uh, Total U.S. bond fund, which does not hold tips, 2.28%. But look at cash, 0.71. So uh, yeah, none of these numbers may, may excite you, but, but bonds, whether it's nominal bonds uh, represented by the total U.S. bond market, or tips, you know, they, they still significantly outperformed cash. And that kind of presents really the, the, the issue for us, even for those in retirement, is that cash over the long term is going to underperform, say, an intermediate term 
bond portfolio, whether we're looking at sort of nominal bonds or tips, certainly if history is any is a guide for us, uh, they are going to out underperform. Cash is going to underperform over the long term. Now, that doesn't mean in the short term they'll always underperform. And in fact, we saw the BND fund yielding 4% right now when you can actually get a savings account at 5%. And it raises the question, well, why is that? Well, we can actually look at yields now on treasuries and we can see the same thing. Let's see here. So this is treasury. This is a treasury yield curve. And you can see at the top, it goes from one month T-bills all the way to 30 year uh, treasury uh, bonds. And we'll look at the most recent data, which is from May 22nd. Look at the 30 year bond, 3.97% compared to the one month treasury bill, which is effectively cash, look at that, 5.69%. And, and these yields aren't subject to state and local income tax. Shouldn't the yields on longer dated bonds normally pay more than shorter dated bonds? Well, when, when there's a quote unquote normal yield curve, that is what happens. But what's going on in the market today? Well, there's, there's of course, inflation right now. There's uncertainty. We have the debt ceiling issue that's sort of hanging over our heads at the moment, and that's causing some uh, big fluctuations within shorter treasury bill markets. But what the market is saying is, yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. It's causing yields to go up. But longer term, we actually think uh, the Fed's going to get their ha a handle on inflation. And we think there's actually sort of less risk, if you will, longer term uh, than maybe shorter term. And that's why we see these yields for longer dated bonds actually lower than a one month or even a three month uh, treasury bill. But here's the thing to keep in mind is it won't always stay that way. That's what's happening right now. But even when you're in retirement, you're still a long term investor. In my view, if you retire at 65, if you just assume a 30 year retirement, of course, we, we don't know how long any of us will be here. But if we assume a 30 year retirement, three decades, you're still a long term investor. And so I think that has to be our focus when we're deciding on do we have cash or bonds and what our stock to bond allocation is. And so in my view, bonds actually are a better investment today than they were a year ago. And let me give you a sense of, of what that looks like. If we go back to BND, remember the yield is 4% roughly. Uh, we can use that number to make an estimate of what th this fund will return if we were to make a lump sum investment today. And I want to stress that for retirees, it's often lump sum. You have a certain amount of money invested and you're probably not adding to it. So in some ways, you're a lump sum investor who's perhaps slowly pulling money out year to year uh, to live on. If you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s, and you're working and you're still contributing uh, each month, say to a 401k or an IRA, the dynamics of how bond funds work will be different for you because you're making these regular investments month after month after month, each time at a different price and a different yield as those things change day to day. But for retirees, we can actually get a pretty good idea of what our experience will be like with this fund. Again, so we'll go back, keep this number in mind, 4% yield. What we want to look at is the portfolio's duration. Here it is. It's six and a half years. So what that means is, you know, you think about a bond, w when do you get your money back uh, from a bond investment? Well, you're gonna get interest payments, say every, usually twice a year. And then when the bond matures, uh, you'll get, you know, the face value, whatever that happens to be. So you can think of duration as sort of a weighted average time to get your money back. Uh, it factors in not only getting the, 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 the face value back when the bond matures, but all those interest payments along the way. And for this fund, it's roughly six and a half years. So we can use that to give us a rough estimate of how this fund will perform. So what we can do is we can take that number and double it. So six and a half times two is 13, and then we could subtract one. So it's, you take the duration, you double it, then you subtract one. In this case, it gets us back to 12. So what that tells us, again, as a very rough rule of thumb, is that over the next 12 years, a lump sum investment in this fund will return its current yield roughly 4%. Now, again, are you excited about that? Well, it is a bond fund. It is certainly 4% over the next 12 years will be significantly better than what it's done over the last 12 years, as we saw just a minute ago. Now, some of you might say, yeah, Rob, but cash is 5% or even more. Look at those treasury bills, almost over 5.6%. That's true, but that's the yield right now. And as we know, those fluctuate day to day. 
a savings account can change its interest rates on you at any time. And so we can't we can't rely on that 5% to last forever. And in fact, what the market is telling us is at some point in the not too distant future, those yields are gonna come down. Now, of course, what's gonna actually happen, your guess is as good as mine, but for, for a longer term investment, which is what retirement still is, I think we need to have that long-term perspective. And so I still think a bond fund that's yielding 4% today uh, is, believe it or not, a longer term better investment than cash will turn out to be. Of course, I guess time will tell. Now, before we get to that last issue of stock versus bond allocation, which uh, is implicated in Mike's question, I do want to look real quickly at the difference between a nominal bond uh, and tips. So remember here, Vanguard Total Bond Market is, is a nominal bond fund, meaning you're going to get this 4% yield. That's what it is now, say for lump sum investment. And that's what you're gonna get regardless of what happens with inflation. Another way to look at it would be, we can take this any of these bonds on this page, but we'll use the 30 year. It's currently yielding 3.97%. That's what you're gonna get if you invest in a 30 year bond today. Uh, and it doesn't matter, inflation could be zero, it could be 20%, it doesn't matter. You're gonna get 3.97%, which raises a really important question. Well. Uh, that 3.97%, it could turn out to be pretty good if inflation's really low, but maybe not so good if inflation turns out to be higher than we think. And that's that's very true. That's a big risk in, in just about any bond investment. But we do have tips. And for tips, we can look at the real yield. That, that is the after inflation yield. And so we'll, we'll stick with 30 years. So... Uh, for a 30-year tip, the real yield is 1.68%. In other words, you, you'll get 1.68% plus whatever inflation turns out to, to, to be over the next 30 years. So what would you rather have? Would you rather have a bond that pays you 1.68% plus inflation over 30 years, or one that just pays you 3.97% regardless of what happens uh, to inflation. And of course, the answer to that question is no one knows. I mean, if you could tell us if we knew what inflation was gonna be over the next 30 years, well, then we can answer that question, but we don't know. And if inflation turns out to be lower than we think, then that 3.97% on a regular US government bond is pretty attractive. On the other hand, if inflation spikes uh, to higher than we think, boy, we kind of prefer the tips which is one of the reasons in my bond portfolio, I invest in both. I have both a sort of a total US bond fund, I actually own BND, and then I have TIPS funds. And I usually about 50% of my bond portfolio is in one and roughly 50% in the other. I'm kind of hedging my bets. I don't know which way it's going to go, but I do believe that those kinds of investments over the long term will absolutely uh, do better than cash, again, Cash may be king right at this moment and having yields that are higher than say an intermediate term uh, bond, but that's what's happening right now. Those cash yields are gonna change uh, significantly. Of course, intermediate term bond yields change as well, but, but in a different way. And I think a bond fund that's paying 4% right now is probably gonna do better uh, than cash long-term. Of course, again, time will tell. So I personally believe we shouldn't give up on bonds for those of us in or near retirement. I think it's an important part of the portfolio. Now, that doesn't mean we don't hold any cash. And in our portfolio, you know, we have about a year's worth uh, of expenses in cash. But that raises sort of the last question implicated in Mike's email. What's the right stock bond allocation uh, in retirement? Uh, and uh, how much, of, of, if any of that, should be in cash? He's suggesting three years worth of expenses in cash and the rest in stocks. Now, we don't know how, what percentage of his portfolio he's spending every year. So these are just some basic observations that I would make. If we assume he's spending 4%, three years worth of cash is 12%, that would mean he's got 88% in stocks. I can tell you that Bill Bingen's research on this, he's the father of the 4% rule, uh, concluded that really the ideal allocation, again, based on historical data pulled from the United States, U.S. stocks, U.S. intermediate term government bonds and inflation, he put the ideal allocation between 50% stocks and 75% stocks. So at an 88% stock allocation, that is well outside uh, the results that Bill Bingen found. Now, 
That doesn't mean that Bill Bingen is right. That doesn't mean that history will repeat itself. And it doesn't mean that an 88% allocation to stocks is necessarily wrong or will, will t turn out poorly for Mike. I would say that it is a very significant allocation towards equities for someone in retirement. It's gonna subject the portfolio to pretty significant volatility. And it's something as a retiree that you'll have to be willing to withstand. And I think for a lot of folks, that's gonna be very hard to do. Now, if you have a withdrawal rate that's very low, maybe you're only spending 2% of your portfolio a year, then a higher allocation to equities might make sense. And you might actually be able to handle the volatility because you're not pulling that much out of your portfolio every year. But for someone taking roughly four or four and a half percent, I personally don't like going over about 75% in stocks. And frankly, for a lot of folks, something closer to 60-40 uh, might make uh, more sense. Again, I don't think there's one right answer here, but I do think, and a question I would have for any retiree at 88% uh, equities is, can you really stomach that volatility in retirement? Now, Part of that then becomes whatever fixed income you're gonna have, how much should you have in cash? As I said, we have one year's worth of expenses in cash. We're comfortable with that. But Bill Bengen actually looked at this very issue. Remember, he wrote his, his paper that gave us the 4% rule in 1994. What a lot of folks don't know is he wrote several follow-up papers in the years following that, including one in 1997. And I wanna show that to you now. Here it is. Conserving Client Portfolios During Retirement, Part 3. Part 1 was his 1994 paper that gave us the 4% rule. This one was published in December of 1997, and he asked a series of questions in this paper, and one of them, relevant to our topic today, I've highlighted it here, is this. Is cash trash, including treasury bills, in the asset mix? And his, he, kind of, he kind of asked two questions. First, he said, is it okay to replace, he used T-bills to represent cash, to replace some of our fixed income, our bonds, with, with cash. Is that okay? And then he asked, well, what about stocks? Is it okay to replace some of our stocks with, with cash? And what he found was that replacing some intermediate term uh, bonds, that's what this IT means in the, in the section here that I've highlighted, replacing up to 10% of our bonds with cash has virtually no effect on the safe withdrawal rate, meaning if you're more comfortable holding some cash rather than say intermediate term bonds, at least according to Bill Bingen's research, that's okay. And he, he put it at 10% of your, 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 um, your bond allocation. He said it has no significant effect on withdrawal rates. Now, uh, the second thing though that he found was replacing stocks with cash does have a pretty significant effect on the safe withdrawal rate. It lowers it. And he made this point in the paper, he said, Folks that are really risk averse, they're, they're scared of the stock market, particularly in retirement. They tend to hold a lot more in cash and they do so at the expense of stocks. Now that's not what Mike was suggesting, but I know that's a, an issue that faces a lot of retirees. And what Bill Bingen said is, look, it's those folks who are probably gonna be the most hurt in the long term. So if you're scared of the stock market, you've really reduced your stock allocation and you're hold, hoard, hoarding a lot of cash, maybe that's the wrong word, holding a lot of cash, it's something to think about. It may feel safe today and it may even feel safe when the market's down, but long term, if history is any guide at all, we know that that's gonna have a pretty significant negative effect on your portfolio and how much you can spend out of that portfolio over the course of your retirement. So at the end of the day, for me, I don't see cash as a replacement for bonds. I think holding some cash, perfectly reasonable. I don't think there's just one amount. We hold one year's worth of expenses. Your number might be a little bit more or less than that. I think though, as you hold more and more cash, I believe long-term it's gonna hurt your portfolio. And that's true whether you're, you're holding that cash in place of say intermediate term bonds, but it's certainly true if you hold that cash in place of stocks. So that's my take. Cash looks great right now, and we hold some cash, but I think longer term, it still makes sense to hold intermediate term bonds. I tend to stick with safe uh, US government and investment grade corporate bonds. Well, there you go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.